Welcome to the Be Bold Podcast. I'm Beth Whitman. This week's conversation is particularly close to my heart. It is with Tibetan singer Yungchen Lamo. You'll hear in this conversation how I discovered Yungchen and her music a decade ago, and then how we actually got connected for this podcast episode. So I won't go into those details here. But I will say this. Meeting her in person was what I imagined meeting the Dalai Lama must be like. She's a quiet, soft-spoken person who gives you all of her focus and attention. She's undistracted. She's present. And she is so incredibly sweet. Everything she does is from the heart. And everything she does is for the benefit of others. That's something you hear quite frequently in uh, Buddhism, doing things for the benefit of others. But you don't come across many people who are actually putting this into practice. You know, in our culture, we so rarely see this that it's almost difficult to get used to. But hopefully, you've come across someone in your life who's similar to Young Chen in that they are so at peace that you want to be more like them. You want that peacefulness for yourself. You see them as a happy person and you want that. I wasn't expecting this when I connected with her online and requested that we speak for the podcast. I really didn't have any expectation of what she would be like in person. I only knew that I really wanted to meet and chat with someone whose voice could be so pure that it brings tears to my eyes. To say the least, it was a great honor for me to spend time with her and chat with her at her sister's home in Queens. Yung Chen's name means goddess of melody and song, and this was given to her shortly after her birth, and she really has lived up to this name. It's worth noting that she isn't a political person, and she made that clear before we recorded that she didn't want to talk about politics or about her departure from her home country. Instead, she really wanted to focus on the work that she's been doing. And that work, in addition to singing, includes her nonprofit, the Young Chen Lamo Charitable Foundation, and I'll link to that in the show notes. This organization is dedicated to improving the welfare of all human beings in need. And specifically, it focuses on improving and empowering the lives of Tibetan women and children, the mentally ill, the disabled, and the homeless. The One Drop of Kindness project that is part of the Yungchen Lamo Charitable Foundation is one example of what she's doing as part of the foundation. It facilitates empathy, respect, compassion, and recognition for others. And she has that in spades. There was a Newsweek article from a few years ago that I'll also link to in the show notes. The article talks about a play that she organized called You Are Beautiful, I Am Beautiful. And it features 13 residents of a homeless shelter in her hometown. In the article, she talks about how in Tibet, people don't talk about mental illness, as in it's not a thing. But what she says in this article is we are all sick in different ways. And that's a very Buddhist insight that we are all delusional. In other words, it's a way of looking at the world to realize we should be compassionate toward everyone because we all have our struggles. You can support her work by donating to the Yungchen Lamo Foundation, by the way. So in this conversation, we talk about how she left her home in Tibet and went to India and then on to Australia. She talks about her assimilation into the Australian culture and ultimately the culture here in the U.S. And she does have some really funny stories about trying to fit in and understand her neighbors and the culture. We also talked about how her musical career took off when she was heard in Australia and was asked by Peter Gabriel to perform at WOMAD, and that's the World Music and Dance Festival. She was actually the first person from Tibet to perform at WOMAD. She released a CD for the event, and that ended up winning an ARIA award, and that's the Australian equivalent of the Grammys. At the end of our conversation, I asked her to sing a bit, so you'll hear her beautiful singing voice. It's very much in the traditional style of the Himalayas, so unless you're familiar with this kind of music, it may be a bit different for you, but it's still just so beautiful, so pure. One side note, uh, you might hear a little noise in the background at times. That's her lovely sister preparing lunch for us. So hopefully that won't be distracting for you. After we recorded, I talked to Young Chen about the possibility of coming to Seattle for a concert. So if you're at all interested in attending a performance by her, send me a note at beth at beboldpodcast.com. I'll keep you posted on those details. 
You can also use that email address to send me feedback, or you can call my feedback and question line at 877 877- 280-5170. On future episodes, I'll be answering questions that are left at that number. With that, please enjoy this conversation with the incomparable Youngchen Lamo. Right now we're in Queens. Thanks to your sister for hosting us. And and I have to say, this is really one of the most beautiful homes that I've been into because we're looking at beautiful tankas here and Buddhas and it's just really spectacular. And you mentioned that your brother is actually a painter of the traditional style and that these tankas are from him. Is that right? Yes. And he's still practicing this. He's yes, still yes. He's still painting. Painting these beautiful, beautiful... Is your home decorated similarly like this? Yes. More like... <laughs> Even more so. <laughs> no. Uh, this is very warm. That's why I asked you to come to do this. And the reason is I appreciate your hard work. And often in this world, for women to do something quite hard. And uh, so therefore, I think it's a thank you that you're doing this. So I said, come to this home. You're so sweet. Sending blessings to all the listeners. Well, you're doing some really wonderful things that we'll talk about as well. But I want to just ask you something. You may not even remember this. Many years ago, I think I had reached out. Well, first, let me tell listeners and I'll tell you how I came upon you. I was traveling in Bhutan many years ago. It was probably 10 years ago. That was my first trip to Bhutan. And there was a CD in a store in a souvenir shop and one of your CDs and I picked it up and I fell in love with it. I can remember, and it's still your voice, your music just brings tears to my eyes because it is so pure and so beautiful, so wonderful. Uh, just It is just really spectacular. And so I, I listened to that CD and I was so drawn in. And I think I reached out, somehow I found your contact information or maybe for your, your record publisher and reached out and we did a little Q&A many years ago, maybe eight <laughs> years ago, just by email. Mm-hmm. You answered some questions and I put it on my website and I was so thrilled. Yes. Now, since then, I think you're on Facebook. I don't know if you participate much on Facebook. No, I am very, so to say, I, mean, I apologize many of the Facebook, the people who listen and people care what I'm doing. Uh, the reason I don't read English And also many years I did not speak English because I was born in Lhasa. Then came to the West, I decided that not learn English. Maybe in the way it's silly, but at the same time, I just always thought everybody's speaking. Everybody's speaking. Everybody tried to learn English. And then I just said to myself, since I was have memories, I did my prayers. And then instead of I pray uh, learning English, if I meet some, meet someone, and then I thought I use my precious time to do the prayers rather than talking just myself. You know, when we do conversation, we always talk about me, my, I, so we never leave from this. So therefore I said, it's okay if one person didn't learn English, maybe it doesn't missing so much. Maybe it's quieter <laughs> for the world. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, world, yeah. you know, it's my silly thoughts. So I never learned. So I was very lucky, I mean, you know, when I met Natalie Mergen, she was very, very unique, her voice. And also she is very special. So we've been friends almost 30 years. And, uh, you recorded with her? Yes, the failure, the songs. And, uh, you know, over these years, we did not speak. I go to her house and then Yang Chen eat, Yang Chen. So I do my prayers. That's how this 
past. And now I just said to myself, you know, because Facebook, many the people who listen my music, they have some stories to tell their life. And then I said, for the respect, I listen their life story.、Mm-hmm. But English never proof, you know. Since you know something, but、uh, it's still hard. English speaking English. Your English、yes. is very good, by the way. <laughs> it, it is. It is quite good. It's better than you think it is. So、mm. believe me. So on Facebook, for some reason, earlier this year, after all of these years, you sent me a note. I don't know why. Do you remember? Why did you send me a note? Because we're not even Facebook friends. Because you don't,、uh, I had sent you a Facebook request and it never got answered, which is completely fine because I understand. But I didn't understand. Kind of out of the blue, you sent me a note and said, "I wish wish you and your family well and prayers and good wishes." And I said, "Young Chen, where are you?" I'm, and you said, "I'm I'm in New York." And I said, "I'm coming to New York. Yes, <laughs> I、yeah. would love to have you on the podcast." But do you recall why you sent a note out? Maybe you sent a note to everyone. No, no, just no, checking no. in. The reason is I performed here in New York City, and because I was very out touch the technology, and when I perform in Asia Society, and、uh, this year early this year, and、uh, there are few men and women they you know burst their tears. And、uh, they say, "Oh, Yang Chen, did I say something?" I said, "I was so happy to see them." And、uh, then they said, "Oh, I did send you message." And then I said, "Did you send my old address?" No, I don't have your address.、And、then I said, "Did you send by email?" I said, "My email changed." I said, "I'm so sorry." And then the the story dawned to me. You know, people say, "Oh, we want to, you know, we want to invite you our place. We got something, something, and、uh, this it's okay." But then, other side, the story. Oh, you know, my parents really love your voice, and、uh, before he go or she goes, the last breath, we want to hear from you. Send some prayers, and、uh, and this really. Made my heart. I I don't know how to explain. You know, I feel not so right. And then they told me, Facebook. I said, Facebook. Why you? That's important. Why you send in Facebook? I said, Why did you not call me or emails? And they said, No. These days we all do Facebook. And then I just like, are you serious? Anyway, so then I came home that night. I just felt so not right, in my heart. And they said, oh, you know, each year we did send you a message, and you know, all the so to say important things. And oh, my daughter married, and we want you send prayers.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, same thing, Facebook. And then I said, "Oh dear, what does this Facebook mean?" So I have a lady; she does this. So normally we send, you know, one year, maybe two times or three times, like these messages. And、uh, I always thought Facebook is you if you have show you announce. Otherwise, you don't send so much things. I thought it's bothering, and.、Uh, The lady Kathy, she was helping me, and she said, "Oh, Yang Chen, if you send your pictures, people are happy to receive your picture." And、uh, I said, "Why? They like to see my picture, you know?" <laughs> no, no, Yang Chen, people that love your music, they happy you receive something. I said, "Oh dear," I said, "I felt bothering them sending something, you know," and.、Um, Anyway, so then I looked, and my Facebook was many years ago. It's already reached five thousand, and then you cannot add more. And then I 
said, "Oh, Yang Chen, this is not right." So I try to look at this Facebook, and then I just see the pictures, and then I said, "Okay, I send, I send like this," but I can't. And then that's how I send it. That night I did not sleep because I was so blown by kind people's message that they have、uh, such a how do you put it? Really, I don't have、uh, words. Very humbled made me humbled, and、uh, you know, often we do things in life. You do with your belief. You wish that every words. You sing or know or you say, it's beneficial for all sentient beings for the earth. But when people say to some of these stories, and it's like、uh, I am part of them every day. And before I n- never looked, people say, "Yang Chen, would you like to send something?" I said, "Oh, you know, we have this show, and winter time, please warm or summer time, summer sub happy summer or something like this." And、uh, so I have two Facebook because people saying we cannot add you, the new people, and then we create a new one. But at the same time, people always going the old one. So then I said, "Wow." And then I said, "When did you send the message?" Every year I send message. So really,、mm, okay, okay. So then I said,、mm, "Oh, this much, you know, faith. You have sending me message. Even I don't reply. Ten years or something like this. Seven, eight years. You still sending. So then I said, I must learn to." Open this Facebook. So then I learned that night, and then I mistakenly, I request some people say, "Can I?" <laughs> <laughs> and so funny, and some people say, "Oh my gosh, is this really you, Yang Chen, a singer?" I said, "Oh, I am." Oh, you know they're so surprised. Well, me too. <laughs> But that's what brought us here today.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> so、yeah. thank you. I mean, it's so. I'm glad for that mistake. <laughs> yeah, it's not a mistake for you, because you know sometimes, for me, most it's we live, we are energy based, so therefore you feel, feel, looking is different. So then I send few people. I think maybe that night I send maybe thirty four, and then also because I don't know how to write, and then I speak on the phone. You speak it, okay. And then I make lots of mistakes,、mm. and sometimes silly words, which is I send few to Europe. They say, Yang Chen, ah,、uh, you doesn't mean this language, is it? I will never believe you say something. I said, "What did I say?" Oh, that's not so <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> English. They can't repeat it. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, then I then I stopped sending you know good wishes、mm-hmm. because I just always think it's a, a right things to do if people send something. I must answer this. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful, and I can understand that guilt. Of feeling that that feeling humble that people people want to reach out to you. I was tears. Yeah, but、uh, it becomes impractical when you have five thousand plus people who are following you. It becomes impractical for you to try to to keep up with everyone, and、yeah. people know that. People people understand that. Yeah, I really wish people understand that I do not speak English, that I do not write read English. You know, and I try my best try to speak English today. Well, we can talk later, maybe about how Kathy can <laughs> Kathy can continue to to help you, so that you don't have to worry about it so much. So,、um, so you you mentioned that you were born in Lhasa, yeah. And tell us what your name means, because it has a beautiful meaning, and and how you came to your name, Yangshen、mm. Lamo. 
you know, my father was monk, my mother was nun, and also many, you know, stories behind. And uh, I was uh, uh, given, my father also gave me Yang Chen something, Yang Chen Duma. My mother also have the idea of giving me Yang Chen. Tsiring means Yang Chen means song or melodies. Tsiring means long life. My father also thought Duma means more like a, I, I cannot think about it. But uh, after three days, I was born, and then my mother's holy man. You know, every local, there has your local holy man. And so he gave the name, Yang Chen Lamo. Yang Chen means song or melodies. Lamo means a goddess. Of course, I mean, I am not that sometimes yeah yeah so that's the meaning of it so how is it that it, you were named did you the holy three, person three yeah by the holy man just after your birth yes how did he know that you were a songstress that you had yeah. a gift i mean we believe a karma and also we believing you know these lamas through their practice. So they, uh, we believe they know. But uh, it's funny ways, even my father has the idea of giving Yang Chen Tsering, uh, Yang Chen Drama, and my mother has the idea Yang Chen Tsering. So they all have this Yang Chen. So you were were destined to to have music and to have a voice. Yeah, and then finally they decide to say, okay, Yang Chen Lamo, yeah. But in you know they also have we have a tanka in Yang Chen Lamo, and uh, in Tibetan also they have people called Yang Chen Drama, Yang Chen something. So it's it's a uh, I I don't want to necessarily say it's a common name, but it's not uncommon. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Hmm. But nowadays many like people who like my music that when they have children. The Westerners, you know, in the West, they call their children also Yang Chen Lamo. So there's many more to come. Yes. <laughs> yes. In the future. Yes. Did Were you singing uh, when you were in Lhasa or did the singing and your really the voice that developed, was that later in India? And it, well, I guess in India, because by the time you went to Australia, you were already a singer. Yeah. A, uh, an established singer. No, I think uh, when I was little, uh, I made up a prayer myself. My grandmother always says, my mother also said, oh, you know, you are so special, you always doing prayers. And then one day, I think when I was uh, five or little later, she said, oh, uh, tell me the prayer. What are you praying? Where did you learn that prayer? Which prayer are you doing? And then I said, oh, no. I said, I, I made up this prayer. And she said, what? And she said, do the prayer. And then I said, oh, I wish I become man. I wish I become man. I wish I become man. And grow quickly, grow quickly, grow quickly. And then I can help all sentient beings. And then she was like, what? Almost like. (laughs) (laughs) She thought you were doing a proper prayer. And here you were making a wish. (laughs) And then I said, oh, and then she just literally is like, you know, pass out. So were you thinking that you wanted to become a man so that you could help sentient beings? Because as a woman, there wasn't that opportunity. No, because, you know, when you're young, you, at that time, you don't know so much many of the things that you admire them, you know, men as a kind, men as a strong. And uh, I want to become men that I can carry water, go to the mountains, you know, pick the wood go to give to these older people fire. And she said, oh, what do you wish? I said, if I doesn't become none, 
And if I cannot practice, then I said I want to help people. My wishes, I will、uh, go to practice Buddhism, and then, and then she was really more like laughing and crying both. Is that unusual for a young child to have such strong feeling, or is that is that common? Is your sister like that, or is there anyone else in your family that had that same desire? I think you know, generally, most people grow there because we look other people first. You know, we look other sentient beings. Doesn't matter your religious or what you eat or your politics, you woman or man. We believe that we are one. The belief is any human being on this planet, any life forms on this planet. We say this could be my papa, this could be my mama, this could be my lover. This could be my child. This could be my enemy. So, we always believe we have these connections, and、uh, we not taught the Western fast country taught everything is I am first me. If I am okay, when I grow up, I not I wasn't taught that way. All sentient being is first. How do you handle that coming from from that culture, and then coming to let's just say the United States, since we're here? But I know that other Western countries are, and cultures are are similar, thinking of themselves first. That must be very difficult to observe and to assimilate into. What is that like for you? You know, I think a beginning it's a hard,、uh, the hard not because they don't、uh, believe that, the hard is that、uh, the human being, so to say, so overwhelmed by life, overwhelmed by it.、Mm-hmm. Yes,、mm-hmm. by Facebook. <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe Facebook, maybe technology. Well, it's all、so. part of it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think you know because I have that fantasy when I came from, you know, took that journey, crossing Himalaya the mountains, and、uh, then you believe that in the in the West culture or countries, that people must be so happy. That's what we believe. Not only so much. There is a So to say,、uh, you can do what you like to do. So, you thinking all people practice whatever they practicing, and everybody. My belief is everybody has their own belief, and you thinking people practice this, and then realize that you know you have home, you don't have lack. Old things, and、uh, but then I realized after one week I got to the Australia, and the people so to say quite、uh, you can see them so so to say like unhappiness, and、uh, this made me I always wonder oh today maybe and、uh, you know then it's funny. In the way,、uh, when I landed, I just because we are when we grow in Lhasa. If you see human beings, you always say hello. That's normal. Even you don't say words. You just yeah acknowledge. You bend your head means respect to them. And、uh, then I saw the neighbors. I always hello. I only know two words. Hello. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Three words I learned before I came, and then I just always said hello. And then you know some people they, you know they start go inside their rooms and close the doors, and then funny they look from the window, and then I just thought, hmm. Anyway, 
So then Australia TV, they came interview me one day. Where were you living in Australia? Melbourne. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this NBC interviewed. And uh, then the neighbors said, oh, gosh, uh, you are on the newspaper. You're so famous. It became a and, different story then, huh? Yeah. Then I said, what is famous? Mm -hmm. Really? You th that struck you? That someone would recognize that you were famous, like th that they would say something to you, oh, you're famous, and you just thought that wasn't important to you? No, because for me, I acknowledge you are next to me. So I always say to hello you. And then some people, they're doing gardening and I want to help them. And then I said, okay. And then I really said to my teacher, I said, I want to go back. I said, I can't. Uh, stay here. And he said, why? I said, you know, one reason I said, the people cannot smiling. Mm. I said, that's really tragic. We have a love. And this love is not on the written paper. Here you feel. And then if we see, and then, and then, you know, on the bus, I always go to sit next to a person. And then my friend, she said, no, no, young chin, don't sit there. I said, why not? Oh, there's empty seat. We go there. There's no other people. I said, why we go to sit? There's no people. Mm. <laughs> Next to no, no, no. In the West, <laughs> this is very rude. <laughs> and then after all this, I put together, I said, no, I rather in a K, so to say, you know, I said, this is not, uh, I will live my life. If this much human being closed, I said, I can't. I said, smiling to me, it's natural. And then she said, oh, especially don't smiling, smiling to the man. I said, why? Oh, they think maybe you want something. And also in the West, if you're smiling, they, they think you want something from them. You really had to learn some new rules, didn't you? Oh, I tried. I looked in the mirror and then I, because I cannot not smile, <laughs> you know. So you practiced in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Then I said, you know, I said in this life, I said, I am perfectly good. I don't need nothing. I born, I have everything with me. I can hear, I can see, I can feel. That's all I need. All others, fine. And then she said, no, no, but, uh, you know, Yang Chin, I said, how can you live with the, not smiling when you see people? Was this, who was this friend who was kind of telling you this? Yes. Is it, was it an American or an Australian, no, Australian person? Australian, Australian neighbor. person. Yes. Oh, the, oh, the neighbor. Mm -hmm. And um, she is actually Italian, older lady, very beautiful one. And... Uh, Especially you come from another country, and then if you're smiling, not good, and then, oh, it's dangerous. And then, you know, lots of things happened. I said, oh. Anyway, so I used my mirror. I said, okay, if I see women, I said, if I see women smiling, it's okay. Yeah, but, you know, Yang Chin, be careful. Okay. So I just said, you know, I mean, I see women, and then I just, like this. <laughs> I see men. Like this, so I use. So you practice. So you smiled with a woman, yeah. and then as you're showing me now, we can't. Listeners don't know, but. <laughs> this. And then finally, I said to my teacher, "I said, no, no, this is not good. I said, I, I cannot live." Did you always dress in your your traditional clothes like this? Most okay. of the time, okay. yes. Most I'll make sure that time. I post uh, at least one photo yes. of you in your clothes so people can see. Yes. I just think it's a simple, easy. Uh, you put this and then you're ready to go. It's beautiful. So I don't need to think top, this, mm -hmm. that. <laughs> so one less uh, thinking saved. Anyway, so it's like that. So that was so that was a difficult transition for you. And now so you live uh just you live just north of New York. What brought you to that region? Oh, my little sister, my, yeah, Natalie Mergen. Uh, 
I believe all of you listen music. I think you know her, and she has a unique voice. I don't、uh, think like you know many voices. You can kind of like similar, and Natalie's voice is different.、Mm-hmm. And also, not only you have a、um, unique voice,、uh, she is also very pure. And very very kind. I think most people know her as the、uh, singer for Ten Thousand Maniacs. Yes, right. But、yes. uh, but I know that she's done solo work, and as we mentioned, she's done some work with you. Yes, as well. So she encouraged you to move from Australia. No, no, no. I was already traveling many many countries, and then four years ago, she said, "Oh, come and、uh, stay here one month. You can rest." Since I know you, you are traveling, and every human being need a you need the rest place, a home, and a rest. So then I, that's how I landing there. Is there a big artistic community up in that area? No, not really. There's not.、Uh, Kingston is very quiet, and、uh, not so many human beings. And、uh, mountains and nature. Do you smile at your neighbors? <laughs> yes, all the neighbor I go because we eat together.、Okay. They are older neighbors.、Mm-hmm. Uh, one is ninety. No, he's eighty-six. So sometimes we take walk, and、uh, uh, all the neighbors doesn't know Tibet. Period. And sometimes you know. You know, when you first came, you believe everybody knows, and then they say, "Oh, you Tibet,、oh, you Taipei." Oh no, Tibet. Oh, oh, so you from Thailand? And then you have to say, "Oh yes, yes, yes." <laughs> <laughs> it just makes it easier, huh? Now I get older. I, you know, learned we as a being, we are energy based, and.、Uh, I always say to my friend, "I am for the world, one of them." By the time we human beings separate, where do you come from? Ah,、uh, your what do you do? Is everything separated? And then you are just don't know. Well, we have a big problem with that right now. Yeah, especially with politics and the government, which we won't get into. I have no desire to talk about that. But I think in this day, and especially with social media, so we can get back to Facebook, also you know contributing to that problem that we do feel so much separate, and there is a lot of us and them and me and I and you and a, and a separation there. Yet you go about in the world just feeling like everyone is it's we're one people, we're、yeah. we're humanity living on a planet, yeah, together. And animals and sentient beings, all,、yeah. and we really need to watch out for each other. Do you find it difficult? And maybe this is where prayer comes in. Do you find it difficult to really maintain that kind of a outlook when ninety-five percent of the people who are around you don't think that way? Sometimes, also, I believe people often talk to me about this. You know, how can Yang Chen? You live in New York. Still so peace, and、uh, you. Since I met you thirty years ago, you, you know, you did what you doing continuously, and、uh, you did not sort of say changed. And、uh, I believe that once you understood alive, where do we come, where do we going, and then also life is so precious. You know, in the fast country, people take life very advantage. That this, like, yeah, I'm here. It's me in this world, and、uh, you know, we plan so much of. We never talk. We never moment of think. I could be going today. This sense. So we don't think about this. Nobody talk about this. And then people kind of like, yes,、uh, you know, I am here, so I do what I want. 
uh, we don't think about, you know, some people, not everybody that people who only thinking this lifetime and then we don't think of the consequences. If I do this, what this is. And also in the fast country, you know, you have our leaders that doesn't believe if I did this wrong, the consequences. They're not so much thinking. They're just thinking, I am so powerful. Actually, you're not. People believe you. People wish you do good things. Put there. You, people put you there. And then you make a mess. So, therefore, it's like a, it's like a, you, it's like a circle, you know. It's, it doesn't matter when I am here, I make a mess. And when human beings don't understand what's human being, and then they do such things like that. If people understood life, what life means. So what is your process for maintaining your philosophy and the values that you keep? Through the practice. And what is your practice specifically? Can you talk about that? We want to achieve a Buddhahood. So this is a big subject. We don't talk about that this moment. But for me, as half of this life, I will do best I can for other living beings, not my well-being. This makes me more humble. And then every moment you think others. Why? Not because you're religious, not because you're politics, not because how you look. Overall, we are one. You like to be happy, I like to be happy. You don't like to suffering, I don't like to suffering. Especially women's. We suffering so much in this world for nonsense. So I think for me, the good thing is come from my parents. What is life should be doing? What life means? Life is not you born, you drop dead. No. Life self is continuity. So therefore, we must do good now and then life after life. In a reincarnated this, yeah, life. Mm -hmm. We all reincarnate it, but where you want to reincarnate it, this you have the ability to do so. You want to become some silly person or you want to become something good. You know what I mean? I don't have the power, say I want to become human being, or but I believe we want to achieve the highest for the whole. But we don't talk about religious. As a human being, we need to do everything unconditional. Not this exchange. Oh, I say this, I look good. I move this, I get. I know for power, for wealth, I don't say, I don't do nothing for these. They come to you. Is that what you mean? I think, you know, these are outsiders. It comes. You know, life is sometimes, it's uh, funny. Something you don't want, they come to you. Something you want, you don't get. So you don't have the control. Our life, we have control. I live today good, or I want to live miserable today. That's we have control. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I choose live even one moment. I want to live good. And then good, what good means? What does it mean? Good is many things. For me, good, everything I do, everything I say, my thoughts for other sentient beings. This is good to me. Do you do that through a regular prayer practice, through meditation? Yes. yes. And is it through, a, and I'm just, I'm assuming 
that this is probably part of it too, is that with every decision that you're making in your day, that it is to help other people. Yes. That it's, it, that it's a constant practice that maybe you have to remind yourself of that at a time, I'm not saying that you never get angry, <laughs> but at a time when you do get angry or upset about something, you just have to remind yourself to kind of go back to that center and remember that everyone is suffering and how could maybe you, could you improve upon this person's world who's just gotten upset with you? I'm using an abstract case here, but I'm, but I'm just saying, I'm first, I'm assuming that you do get angry <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> it's not angry. Once you know bees are poisoned, so then you don't angry. Angry this, you know, when you're angry, you make the world dirty. That's my thinking. You don't get angry, but sometimes you're disappointed, you know, for some people. And, um, but then you look, oh, that person angry, he or she is ignorant. That person, lady or man, that doesn't mean to do that. And then you feel sorry for them. Obviously, when you're angry, upset, it's not good for this life. You know, your health will deteriorate. But that's why, you know, when I went to this homeless and some people, they doesn't curse me, but they're cursing some silly words. And uh, I don't uh, take this serious. If you say, oh, Yang Chen, you are the most beautiful. Oh, Yang Chen, you are the most ugliest. Or you are the something. Doesn't matter. They are the same. To me, doesn't matter. Do I the most beautiful? What beautiful means? So ugly, it's we have inside, not outside. Hmm. So I will look, you know, especially in my, so to say, this singing journey. It's not my wish to one the uh, Aria world. They say equivalent of American Grammy world. This is the award that you won in Australia. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And of course, there are some people that... Uh, they're not so pleased. They think they should get or something like this. It's very funny, you know. And um, I just always feel sorry for them because I don't look for this. And also, once you know what you're doing, that should be to me, it's a word. If I know my thinking, my action, my words, if I do everything for others, and then this I carry as my wealth, this carry as my award. So it's not that you don't care about what you do, because I believe that you care deeply, but you are not attached to an outcome. I think maybe that is a way to put it. But it's interesting to me that someone who is not attached to the outcome, that you can be so successful and continue on this on a career path with this beautiful voice. And it's like you're carried along. You know, it's like kind of the wind is taking you and one thing is leading to another. Is that is that really because I don't know a lot about your history of really how you got started and maybe your first performance, but it seems like you had a you had a beautiful voice. This was your destiny. And you sang and then you got invited to sing again. And then I think you got signed to Peter Gabriel's, to his record label, Real World, and things just kept moving and moving and moving. And you don't spend late nights making lists of things to do and how you're going to get the next record deal. No. It's just things are just kind of moving along for you. And, and really the center, the basis of everything is how can I help other people along the way? That's it's an amazing philosophy. Mm. You know, the beginning how started was I was in Australia and uh, I want to stay there, learn a little bit of the history of Australian and uh, go back and uh, return to Lhasa. That's my wish. 
and uh, they along have, with being a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I know you let go of that. <laughs> yes, and uh, no, I just uh, decide that. And then my teacher has a student, and I was doing a translate, so to say, Chinese language to my teacher, and there are some students Chinese. So then they really said, oh, you know, we love your voices and when you speak to us and we feel touched. And, uh, and then I thought, mm. so they are meditating their prayers. And then I thought, oh, if they love my voice, then I maybe sing the mantras to them. They said, yeah, Yang Chen, you are not Lama, you are not monks, you're not nuns. Uh, you know, you are like one of us. And when you say something, it goes to our heart. And uh, so then I said, okay, if that's so, and then I sing this six syllables, Oman Pema Hong. So this somehow Peter Gabriel heard that tape. And then they said, oh, come to performing for the warm at Adelaide. This is four years one time happened, that's they told me. And, well, WOMAD in Adelaide? Yes. Did you say? Mm -hmm. and, and I'll just say for listeners that WOMAD, we used to have one in the Seattle area, WOMAD, yes, that I had attended. I did there. Oh, just the, they were such wonderful performances, and I think they're still happening in England, but I don't know that they have that, that as many destinations as they used to. Beautiful, just music festivals, international music festivals. Yeah, that's very unique because Peter Gabriel knows who the artist is. You know, who, you know, because of him, many people have that opportunities because I was signed by him. But before that, I performed there and uh, my teacher said, you know, in the history, there is nobody come from Tibet performing there. So you go. And then I said, okay. So I went and then I said to him, first time and last time, he said, okay. So I went performed. And then in there, people say, oh, everybody has a CD and, uh, you know, you only don't have CD. And and then I did not really make a CD to sell because I said everything is not for sale. And then they said, no, 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 no. It's good you have so people can listen your voice. So then we quickly make this CD and then this CD the also newspaper, I sing a cappella, and then on the newspaper they said Nusrat Fali Ali Fati Khan, he passed away. He is Pakistani religious singer. So in that day there is lots of drama behind. I mean the audience see that I sang and I did maybe twenty five interviews that day. And then the heat, the dust and the people, and then I lost my voice in the night before I sang. Mm. And then I told them I cannot sing. Oh, no. <laughs> because I cannot say anything. Mm. And then I shout, I put my, you know, fingers. And uh, anyway, so then they announced that I don't perform. And then lots of people, you know, you cannot see the end, people waiting. You know, some of them have my names and some of them, you know. And then I was very, so to say, I just prayed, say, give me one song. And then even tomorrow start, no voice, nothing. It's okay. No. Then they brought lots of medicines. I ate the medicines, after medicines. And then by the time I just, after medicine, I get so dizzy because they're so strong. <laughs> anyway, so everything is together. Really, I even cannot say no. So then I packed my tuba. I was saying, oh, maybe not meant to be. Anyway, so by the midnight, after 12 o'clock, I taking my suitcase, they're sending the car and going back to the hotel. And then I just did one so to say, pray myself. And then the voice came a little bit. And then I went in the room, a uh, dressing room, and then I sang a little bit, and then uh, like this. And then the 
person who next to me, oh, your voice came back. Oh, Yang Chin, uh, you just uh, on the stage. You just tell them, say sorry. You don't have voice. These people waiting from nine o'clock. They are waiting for you. At least you show your face. And then I said, okay. So then when I went on the stage, and then microphone, everybody claps. This is after then, midnight. Yeah. By by the time when I went to stage, it's after one o'clock. So then I sang. Then voice came, and then I sang one, two, like that. Mm. <laughs> and then, Were you the grand finale? Were you the last one? <laughs> then, yes. oh yes. god, <laughs> because the first of all, it's closing. Their vision is, you know, after many days, they they said they have eighteen thousand people, something like this, show for this festival. Around the world, and、um, so lots of stages, and then I was performing also this、uh, big stage. And for me, it's first time to be on big stage, and、uh, yeah, it's、uh, very emotional. You know, here I am dizzy, and I hardly standing there because the medication. But I see some of them has flag. And then tears, you know. Then it's like, anyway. So, <laughs> so I sang one song. I doing sound check, and then voice came and people clapping. And they said, no, no, not now. You know, this show is cancelled. And then everybody clapping. So then I said, maybe I can do one song. And they said, are you sure? So my leg was shaking, and the body is just very dizzy. Then I just said, you know, if I'm going to pass away, it's also okay, meant to be. It's fine. It's good death on here. So then I really determined do one song. So then I sang so like that, and then because of that CD we made quickly, that one be a are you world, <laughs> and then because that show, and they said. He and I was the best on this festival. Some newspaper wrote, "No, the Nusrat Ali Fatih Khan." And、uh, so then, lots of people invite me to perform. And then I toured in Australia for the lamas to come to Australia. So I toured everywhere, and then. Of course, people say come here to perform. Come they perform, and、uh, I said I don't perform. I cannot entertain people. I said I am not singer. I am not looking for that. And、uh, of course, what did then, you consider yourself? You know, for me, it's an offering. I see. So it wasn't, as you said, for performing. It was really an it. It was an offering, a prayer for sentient beings. Yes,、mm. for this earth.、Mm-hmm. And you know, the reason I did it, my mama always say, you know, when you do prayers, no matter where you pray, even the bug hears it's good. And this I know. And prayer is a energy, and prayer has. You know, we believe that way. I mean, I don't wish. It's my also one not wish everybody has to become Buddhist, you know. And you have your religious; they have their religious belief, and、uh, I think it's necessary. You practice what do you believe. You know, these things is not like a fashion. Today you Buddhist, tomorrow you God, the next day you are. Something, I think. Also, I think if people really want to practice meditation or any forms, I think you need to really investigate thoroughly, and also you need to say why I want to practice that, why, for what, and then I think. It, If you find the real teacher, especially these days, people that using religious and order to do some silly things. Do you pay attention to the news? 
No, because I never had TV in my house. I've been here in the West over 30, maybe 30 years or 31 years. I never had TV. And some of my friends, they are uh, kind. Beginning, they bring me TV and uh, they say, Yang Chen, you know, if you have TV, you can watch and then you can learn English. There might be some truth to that, but I don't. Uh, I don't have a TV and no cable or anything just to to watch. It's and the news. That's I mean that's just because TV. I think is so terrible. But uh, but then there's the news, and I try not to pay attention to the news because I think it makes me ineffective. I think I can be a better person if I don't if I'm not caught up in that. So that's how I see it. Yeah, for me, you know, we need technology, but. Uh... We don't need always. Um, I also wrote a song about that, actually. Uh, you got to call me. And especially we these days, the mothers or the lovers, you know, one person say, say something without thinking. You order the other side, you're mad. And um, so then the parents always so much... Instead of say, you know, I send a prayer, if I do good, my child will be good. No, we always outside, opposite. Where's my child? Where's my lover? Or why they don't call me? Or why they... And then you, even you in the house, holiday, your mind is not holiday. You completely torture yourself. So you have some projects that you're working on right now. What uh, what is it? You have a nonprofit, I know. Um, yes. What is it that you're working on? Are you and are you working on a new CD? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. The all important question. Oh, you know, many years ago, uh, from the beginning, I always want to help single mothers. You know, I just um, because I found. That women, no matter how powerful you are, once you become single mother, it's very difficult. Because my grandmama was single, my mother was become single, and uh, so then I know the single mother's uh, difficulties, and uh, I myself also a single mother. So I was uh, nineteen or twenty years. I decide that I stay. By myself, and uh, do you have one child? Yes, one son, and uh, but there are other children call me mamas. I have, yes, plenty, and people want to help. I appreciate that. And um, this uh, fourteen years ago, I start this Young Chenama Charitable Foundation, and um, people always say, you know, Young Chen, we want to help you directly because your music healed me and in the past i said oh you don't need to set up yourself foundation they have lots of foundations and also i can do things that no need to be announced we need to do more than say it so i never wish to set up something and uh, so then later on say people you know young chin please if you do something like this we feel connected to you and uh, now we know many years about you, how you live, what you say. And so I have this now. It's 14 years. And uh, this is 5OC3. And um, under this, you can help the single mama or the children, uh, the school. And then now we're going to build a place that uh, upstate New York so that we do music, art, literature, and then people who passed away, going to pass, they also can be prepared for the death, and some homeless. And also we have here in the West the one difficulty that people come here and then the parents busy go to work. And then we, the children who have holidays, now what do you do? Mm -hmm. They have nowhere to go. Yeah. And then try to 
sending to summer school, whatever that is. And my uh, wish is that these children come there and then we take some different uh, schools to look, exchange with the Western children so that they have uh, exchange, you know, like a platform. So not you are just Tibetan here. And also uh, we have uh, nuns, monks, nuns uh, between Nepal and uh, on the mountains. They have an earthquake a few years ago in Nepal and they completely washed where they live. And uh, so now they are building some places. And uh, so I try to help them build water system by blanket, you know, uh, normal what we need. And this is all through the Young Chin Lama, Lama Foundation, Foundation, Charitable Foundation. Uh, Young okay. Chin Lama Charitable Foundation. And this project called One Drop of Kindness. Mm-hmm. One Drop of Kindness. Uh-huh. Yes. And I'll link to that in the show notes so people can find that easily. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And also the website has a, a foundation's website. Mm-hmm. And this foundation's website is youngchenlamo.org. So people can go there, do volunteers, and soon we're going to, uh, we are updating this website. And uh, you can help anyways, you know, volunteer ways, uh, giving donations. Even you put one cent, we'll let you know where the money went and uh, clothing. If you doesn't use something in your house, we also will collect. They'll donate. You can donate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And especially uh, if you want to part of this means then you, you know, you can be part of the foundation. And then if you in the, in America, different places, if you want to represent Young Chen Lama's foundation, you also can. And then each year I go there to perform. We do more like fundraisings. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, great. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about today that we might have missed? Oh, I have a few CDs signed by Peter Gabriel. <laughs> this I always forget. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then also I make a jewelries myself. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Where do we find your, your jewelry? Uh, soon I'm going to put on the website. Okay. And this is I recently tried to manage Right now, I make myself and uh, future the Tibetan single mothers or nuns they can make. So we can, if people would like to get that. That would be a nice source of income for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't want always we are paralyzed. You know, I don't believe that we should be always two ways so that this Life doesn't make sin. Otherwise, we sit here and then say, oh, because of this, I am suffering. Because of this, I'm suffering. No, I always think we must go together, walk together. Mm -hmm. I often say, and this ties in with what you were saying in kind of your philosophy, is that I think people are paralyzed right now and they're depressed because of what's going on. You know, whatever side quote unquote side you're on or whatever your beliefs are, people are allowing themselves to be depressed and to be paralyzed. And they're forgetting that those are events that are taking place outside of them. And it's it's not what's taking place. They're allowing that to affect what's taking place in their own mind. And if if we can control that and you said something earlier, I think before we started recording about how we give attention to things. And if we give something attention then it gives it power. And if we can just bring that focus back to our mind and through meditation and just training ourselves, then we don't give things power. I think I see many of the families that from the morning, they put the TV on. And then on TV, many of the things, especially these days since 9-11, after September 11, it's this country has such a unpleasant, everything is saying terrorist, terrorist, 
you make so many people fear. Human beings naturally have some anxieties and then make everything disaster. Everything is, if you look, many of the things that are not good. And then especially some couples, oh, I believe this party, this is my party, this is my party. I mean, really, you know, two of you meant to be together by karma you met. And this is a most powerful. Love is the most powerful. Yet once you bring all these disaster, and then everything is scary, everything is uh, not good. Food is not good. Nature is not good. Sun is not good. <laughs> Raining is not good. <laughs> too much rain, too much sun, yeah. <laughs> you know, everything, everything is not good. Mm -hmm. And then you don't give yourself, so to say, I have a life. Life is a continuity. Long as I don't lie, long as I don't use silly things for power, for wealth, I am fine. No. So you give this life somewhere and then you go to for look life. So therefore, I'm not saying everybody is like that. When you say I'm angry, I don't angry, but sometimes I just wonder why the parents, the child minute up, they need a hug, they need kisses, they need, you know, together. They don't need this, these gadget. Or right, the phones and the laptops oh, and cry. everything. Yeah, you don't cry. Ah, uh, and they get handed an iPad or a phone or something so that they they stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think this is would be to me. I see this is many ways very dangerous mental illness because these no feelings, mm -hmm, the phones, mm -hmm. and then if you away from the feelings, nothing left. Mm -hmm. If you away from the energy, and these, not good. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure how this setup will work that that I have with this microphone. But would you be able to do an a cappella song for us? Yes. So before we get to you singing, I do want to talk about the fact that you have another CD coming out. Um, so can you talk about that and what that will encompass? Yes. One CD, it's all a cappella, no music. And uh, most I uh, would do prayers. And uh, anyway, everything I do, everything I use my voice, it's uh, energy. And uh, it's a prayers. And uh, one CD will have little music. And uh, this, so to say, beginning of next year would be come out. And all the proceeds go to build this place. People can go. And uh, the project is for the children, the Nepalese. They are not uh, born in Lhasa. They're born in Nepal. And then many of their mothers, when they little girl, people selling this. And then when they get some disease, they just throw out. So then later on, some of them, they have babies, so they cannot look up to them. So they have a place, and uh, uh, one couple, they're looking these children. And uh, so I'm helping them also this year to build room. Right now, they squeeze in tiny rooms, you know, with this bed, double bed, or so these the project. So CDs, jewelries, my t-shirt, whatever I sell, merchandise, people purchase, the money go towards that. So you don't feel the need to produce the CDs for your own financial gain or to go on tour, you know, to constantly be out there in order to satisfy a particular lifestyle, let's say? 
No, no. <laughs> I don't own car. I don't own nothing. I don't own house. People say, oh, why you live such small place? Why you don't have that? Why you don't have that? I always say to them, I have everything I need. I can see. I can hear. The most important, I can feel. And very importantly, you can sing. Yes. <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have the vo voice. Right. And this voice took me all these uh, countries. Some people say I've been to 97 countries. And, uh, you know, most of them, I, first of all, I don't remember where I am because you don't understand the language. And also, many years, I even don't speak English. So we're not counting the cities or villages. You, I, most time I remember, oh, so-and-so was so kind. So then you remember, oh, from Italy, from Spain, you remember the people, because you not pay attention so much out. You know, human being is with the energy. So you, some parts you remember. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, when I looked uh, last week, I was looking, uh, some people want to see the newspaper articles and then there's like a whole box of like that. It's entire newspaper <laughs> wow, big box, around yeah. the world. And I just thought, really? And then when you look, you're just thinking, you're feeling quite old this much place you've been and this much you did normally when you don't look you don't right it's a big blur mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. but you have so much more to do yes too yes yes mm -hmm. i am and also i uh, wish that there are people support what i do and i really really from bottom of my heart i feel grateful and thankful and if people donate something i will send some jewelries made by me or send something tankers my brother painted uh, something people always say young chen if people give to you you don't need to return something uh, you already saying but i always think two ways mass well your your voice is your gift to yes. to, to many of us so. <laughs> yes. Are you ready to sing or do you need... Uh... Yes, yes, I am ready. Wherever you are in this world, and I wish that we are in this moment uh, together, and this moment is... Yeah, if we could live a moment all day if we believe this is the moment, doesn't matter what happened. And then... I think it'd be healthier for life, for the mind.
Can you tell us what that means? The first one's Tibetan mantra, six syllables, and each of them colors, and also represent, you know, uh, different Buddhas. And uh, the second one saying, all the sentient beings wakening from ignorance, and uh, more so to say, come out from the suffering. All sentient beings are suffering. So free from suffering. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's beautiful. So I write these melodies according to my voice. So uh, when I perform a cappella, I ask the audience, we sing together. So people often say, where's your orchestra? Where's your band? I said, my band is my audience. And... Uh, you know, when you go travel in this world, man's world, and not so easy. You know, you go, especially, I've been to all these prestigious, I mean, I performed for the Lilifair tour. All these women that they are glamorous and unique, and you name it. Uh, you know, Cheryl Crow, Jewel, Sarah and in the Gogos, many of these. And, uh, you know, people say, where's your band? And then they see me so tiny, mm, no band. So there's five obstacles for me beginning. Women, doesn't speak English, sing prayers, uh, no band, and also born in Lhasa. And people don't know where's Lhasa. Many of them. 30 years ago, people doesn't know so much. And then later on, I become, you are the first. Oh, first I met a Tibetan woman. Oh, first, you know, like this. So you become first, first, everything. And then you kind of like very thick, so to say. 
you know, you wish you be part of them. And then when they say, I never met, <laughs> oh, you are the first time, and wherever you go, you are the first time. Of course, you know, first time, somehow it's good, somewhere, and somewhere it's not good. Because if I sign, you know, if in the CD company, if there's people want to sign a CD, and then if people say I'm from Lhasa, and some people say from Africa, they want to sign the African people because there is history or Bob Marley or something, something, it's already there. And then from born over there, the Himalaya side, people say, oh yeah, their music, monks chanting. And that's not music, you know? And who made a history in music industry? No. So therefore you, it's harder. Well, you've done a lovely job. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Young Chen, thank you, thank you so, much. so much for your time and for coming down here. I know you had to come down to the city from your home, and I appreciate it. Now I see it's the my space. Pleasure. Yeah, it's just, it is such a very sacred space here. So I appreciate that and your sister hosting me today. So thank yes, you, and best she of luck. Is my little sister. <laughs> you know, you, when you have sister, then you know what <laughs> that means. Yeah. I have three brothers, so I'm the little sister. Of oh, that, you are lucky. Yeah, I don't know. You are lucky. Uh, thanks again. And I look forward to your uh, your CD and seeing your jewelry and all the wonderful things that you're involved yes. with. So, and I'll yes. be sure to, to keep my listeners and readers and, and community uh, up to date on what you're doing as well. So thanks again. Thank you. And then, you know, music, the website, youngchenlamo.com, the foundations, youngchenlamo.org. And they can also connect to me, youngchenlamo at gmail.com. And uh, Kathy or Nick, they will read these emails. And uh, all the you listeners, I appreciate it. I apologize also my this English, not so correct. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I still feel so incredibly honored and touched that she would spend her precious time with me. She really is just so beautiful inside and out. If you like what you heard and you want to show some appreciation for Young Chin and her good work, I encourage you to give a donation to the Young Chin Lamo Charitable Foundation. You can find that at youngchinlamo.org, and that's Y U N G C H E N L H A M O.org. And if you'd like to find out more about her, you can go directly to her website, and that's youngchinlamo.com. I'll link to both of those in the show notes to make them easily accessible for you. And you can find those show notes at the com website or on whatever platform it is that you're using to listen to this. Whether or not you're new to the podcast, please do me a solid and subscribe. When you do, it helps give the podcast more visibility and ranking. Also, help me spread the word about the podcast by telling your friends and family about this episode or any other one that's captured your attention. You can find out about the tours I lead at wandertours.com. That's W-A-N-D-E-R, wandertours.com. And I did chat with Young Chen about a possible trip with her. So you never know what might come of that. You can find out about that uh, on the Wander Tours website, maybe down the road. For now, I've got space on our women-only South India tour in February our co-ed trip to Papua New Guinea uh, next August. And as of this moment, there are just three spots left on our Ireland tour in the fall of 2019. You can connect with me by friending me on Facebook and I'm WanderGal on Instagram. You can find out more about me by visiting wanderlustandlipstick.com. Sign up for my newsletter on the Wanderlust and Lipstick site and you'll receive a series of tips for making your travels safer. I often have giveaways coming up in the month of October. There'll be a giveaway for a Prana item, of a nice uh, jacket from Prana. Ladies, you can join us on our Be Bold Facebook group. We've now got over 2,600 members in that group. It's a community of amazing women who are sharing their wins, sometimes their struggles. The bottom line is we're learning from each other. We're giving each other kudos and high fives, and we're sharing some great information and encouragement. Thanks for joining me for another episode of the Be Bold Podcast. Until next time, be bold.